the building of my most ambitious act to date, my Marie Antoinette act. If you don't like spoilers, don't watch this. First of all, my Pinterest is filled with pictures of cake because I knew I wanted a giant cake prop, so I looked at a lot of cake back in January. I knew I was going to want to get on top of the cake, so I did this amazing sketch, which I really need you to look at because it's a lot. <laughs> I took a lot of measurements and one trip to the hardware store later and a bunch of lumber, some screws and a wood saw, I had my frame base. Now what didn't make the cut is that back piece there because I was going to do inversions and then I realized I didn't need it. Now that the frame is done, it's time to build the cake around it. I use giant chunks of styrofoam, which then get molded together using spray foam and clamped overnight. From there, it's a matter of using a rasp and different tools to carve away to the shape that you want. This is not my first rodeo with this, but I haven't ever carved something so elaborate, so I'm really proud of myself because it went swimmingly. I would highly recommend keeping a vacuum on hand because it does get super, super messy, and you want the bits of styrofoam to end up in a rubbish bin, not in the streets where they might wash into the streams and waterways. So from here, I had previously taken a picture when it was blocky and done a color layout to give me an idea of what to do with the paint scheme. Now, once it was done and all primed and hard coated and ready for painting, I realized keeping it a bit simple was better. So I just went with purple and pink and a nice ivory color. Later on, after looking at it for months and months, I realized that the pink needed to pop a little bit more and the whole thing needed to be a bit pearly. So I ended up re-covering it with a different paint scheme just slightly so that it would read a little bit more cartoony from stage. Despite the fact that I've started this video with the cake, the cake did not come first. The costume came first. And it's all due to this woman. This is my lovely friend Rachel who owns a company called Class Act Tutu. She gave me a ring one time and said, I'm cleaning out my storage and I've got all this fabric and do you want it? And I said, yes, and I made this. Up till this point in my costuming career, I have surprisingly not made a historical costume. So I was really excited about taking some things that I had lying around the studio and making me a Marie Antoinette costume. And months later, I added more detail into the filigree and stuff. Uh, and fun fact, during that time, shortly after, I was asked by Macklemore to make a costume for him. And surprisingly, I had a bunch of leftover appliques. So. Uh, somewhere on stage around the world right now is the sister piece to my Marie Antoinette costume, or at least they're from the same family anyway. In traditional historical garments, there's something that pushes the hips out, a peignoir, I think it's called, or peignoir. And for this, I used a bunch of horsehair, made some ruffles and a circle skirt to receive the effect. Boop. So here's what we have so far, a cake and a costume. And you can see I went back and airbrushed some pink in to tie it all together. Next up, the wig. I knew from the start I wanted this act to be an aerial act, and I also knew I wanted to sing. That's right, sing. So, what did that mean? It meant I had to be a little bit smart about how this wig was made. It needed to come off, and it also had the capability to hide things in it. Hmm. Hide things like a mic pack. Yes, and a wireless mic woven into the hair. If you saw the show and you heard me singing and you were wondering if I was really singing or where my mic was, it was in my wig. So this left the question, well, what is underneath my hair? Obviously a hair fall painted pink. And if you saw my previously post about dyeing hair falls, that's obviously what it was from. So are you wondering how this all worked? Well, here you go. Taking a beat to point you towards this cosplay duo, the Cow Butt Crunchies. I learned a ton of stuff from watching their tutorials. Check them out on Patreon and you can learn cool stuff too. Now let's talk about my attendant look, which in all honesty, sometimes I like more than my Marie Antoinette dress. I started with pictures of Napoleon era French armor. Yes, I know that Napoleon and Marie Antoinette were not around at the same time. 
but as a reference jumping off point, there was some amazing imagery. These are miniatures. They are not actual armor sets, just an FYI. I use the Punished Props helmet template. This is a husband and wife team based in the Northwest. I absolutely love their Patreon and their YouTube channel. Please go check them out, buy their templates, learn all the things. Then I used my other favorite cosplayer ever, Kama Cosplay, her breastplate pattern. Everything I know about foam armor, I learned from Kamu Cosplay and Punished Props. So please check out the links I set up below and go and support them because they are awesome. Okay, back to my project. After assembling the foam breastplate, I used spare bits of craft foam and other different widths of EVA foam to uh, make the decoration, which I then used a Dremel and some sandpaper to carve into. From there, I put the base coat of purple on. Once the purple layer was dry, I went over it with a coat of silver rub and buff to give it a metal look. Then I added all the details, the gold and the rose gold, and a bunch of clear coats on top of that. The final process being using oil paint to go in and give it an aged look. If you're wanting to learn more about this paint process, again, refer back to Punished Props or Kama Cosplay because they have lots of cool intel about paint. From here, I needed a guide as to what the body wear would be. So I took a picture of this, put it in a really, really fancy professional computer program and did this doodle. And then I made it. Yay! Everything's looking pretty good. Pretty stoked about how it all is. And here's a silly picture of me acting like a goofball. Bonus, I made a Triton. I used a crappy Triton from some Halloween costume and a, with a bit of leather and some oil paint technique, which I'm using here. And the reason why you want to use oil paint is that it doesn't dry super fast. So you can uh, paint it into the crevices and wipe it off and uh, it'll age it a little bit better with a longer working time. But uh, as you can see, it just made this Triton just a little bit more fancy than a costume shop one. And here's Tova. And she looks so cute in it. I was so happy with how it all came out. I'm really happy it fits. Let's talk about the aerial fork. Yes, I knew I wanted to make a gag about let them eat cake. So I knew I needed an aerial apparatus and I wanted a fork. The added bonus here is that if I ever do an Ariel, as in Little Mermaid act, I have a dingle hopper. So we started with some sketches and I reached out to a welder friend of mine and I wanted some filigree, but I didn't want him to have to bend all that metal. So I found a place that makes iron filigree wall hangings. Since this was made of steel, he was able to weld it together and weld it so it screws on the back so my fork can actually get smaller for packing purposes. From here, I laid it out and we redid the dimensions and then like two weeks later, it was done and it was amazing. All that was left was a little bit of sanding and some gold spray paint and ta-da! Yes! There you go, how to build an act from A to Z. And just to go to show, you can take a drunken idea and make it come to life. <laughs> you just need a little bit of time, some hot glue, some barge, some foam, some rhinestones, and you too can be this ridiculous.